Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up the last few books that I've been reading uh, towards the end of September and then what I've read so far in October. Four of these nine I read for Latinx Heritage Month. I ended up having a really great Latinx Heritage Month and the first one that I read for Latinx Heritage Month was Letters from Cuba by Ruth Behar. Ruth Behar is an author that I've been really looking forward to reading. Her previous book Lucky Broken Girl has a lot of buzz surrounding it and I feel like pretty much everybody who has read it has liked it so it's definitely one that I want to get to particularly because of how much I enjoyed Letters from Cuba. Letters from Cuba is a historical fiction middle grade that is set in, in the, 19, the late 1930s in the time period when Nazi Germany is increasing more in power. The main character of this book is a Jewish girl from Poland. Her father has moved to Cuba to make some money to then try to bring the rest of the family along and Esther joins her father, takes this trip from Poland all the way to Cuba by herself to then help her father make money as well. I think the most interesting aspect of this book is seeing how many different kinds of people exist in this Cuba and that she starts making friends with. She really likes exposing them to her culture but she also likes taking in their culture as well of all of these new friends. It is written in letter format so every chapter of the book is a letter that Esther is writing to her sister back in Poland just to let her know how everything is developing while they're in Cuba and it's just a really uplifting sweet story. I, I think the most special aspect of this is the characters and how through these letters I felt like I knew Esther so well. She is a great main character for a middle grade book and if if you're curious about this book, I definitely recommend it. I really, really enjoyed it. The book I finished after that is I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick. And I was really anticipating this book after I heard some things at work of people who, who enjoyed it. I'm constantly trying to look for more mystery and thriller young adult books that focus on some of the same aspects that Sadie does about like girls, protecting girls, also podcast elements. And I Killed Zoe Spanos has all of those things as well. This book was a little bit more surreal than I anticipated at first and it takes some inspiration from Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier which is one of my favorite books ever. I don't necessarily think that it lived up to those aspects of it where it's a little bit more kind of psychological in the mind of what is actually happening here but a lot of the things that it tried having to do with kind of this haunted house and this person Zoe Spanos who has this kind of um, Rebecca aspects to her. I think those things were done very well here. Definitely the star of this, in my opinion, is Martina Green and her podcast, so that's definitely the thing that I enjoyed the most out of this book. The book that I finished after that was my second book that I read for Latinx Heritage Month, and that was Punching the Air by E.B. Saboy and Yusuf Salam, and I've already returned it to the library because it has a holds list, and this book is in verse young adult that focuses on a teenage boy that has been incarcerated after a ruling has deemed him guilty. There was some fight and some conflict that uh, landed someone in the hospital and that's kind of all we know as we learn more and more. This had a really beautiful rhythmic aspects to the poetry and that's probably the thing that I enjoyed the most. I definitely really enjoyed the first like third and half more than I enjoyed the second half just in the way that everything continued to be developed. I really enjoyed the kind of ideas that the authors were really focusing on, what it feels like to be an incarcerated teen when you know that some of the things that the teen did he himself agrees were wrong but at the same time do not live up to the sentence that he has been given. So I liked how the authors searched through those themes. Also just in general what poetry and art can do to make you feel better about bad situations in your life and how those can be kind of saviors to you and also the bonds that are built uh, when he is on the inside. I thought that this would have been a much stronger piece of literature if it had been a memoir actually and if it came straight from Yusuf Salam's own experiences because he hasn't published anything about his experiences that's a full-length book and then I found out that he is coming out with his own memoir in 2021 and I'm much more looking forward to that. Um, I ended up giving Punching the Air I believe three stars so still worthwhile and still interesting especially if you like books in verse. It just didn't live up to all of my expectations for it. The book that I finished after that was a really cute one called Donut Feed the Squirrel 
Girls. This is a really sweet beginning graphic novel. So there's very, very minimal writing in it. This I'm definitely going to re recommend to a lot of younger readers that want to get into graphic novels. And this is just a hilarious little story of these squirrels that are trying to get into this donut food truck that is making donuts. They want donuts and they come up with all of these plans to get these donuts. Really lighthearted and funny and I definitely read this with a smile throughout the whole time I was reading this. The next book that I finished after that was Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I've been reading this for quite a while. I was really into it when I first started and I read probably the first half in like a day and a half and then it took me like a couple weeks to finish the second half. There's this part kind of in the first, I want to say third, that really switches up the entire point of the book and that took me out of it. I didn't necessarily ascribe to that or care for that kind of twist in the story and I think that's what made it so much more difficult for me to want to continue reading. If you've read this book then you know probably what I'm talking about. Um, it flips really the script of who this main character is and changes the, the whole trajectory of the story. This is a book about a main character who's a bookseller and he created this blog list many many years ago uh, writing down the eight perfect murders in books and now there's basically a serial killer on the loose committing all of these murders to a T based off of this blog post that the main character wrote. There's definitely multiple parts of this book that did make me gasp, it did take me by surprise and that I enjoyed, but I think towards the last third I was more like just tell me who it is and let's get this over with because I wasn't as engaged with the writing towards the later half. As it is revealed, I thought that the revelation was interesting and I thought that I understood where everything was coming from, nothing was really necessarily um, letting me down, but I think what let me down was the interest that I had in this book in the first half and then how that interest really swayed towards the end. I ended up giving this three stars. Then I read a really special book and that was my third for Latinx Heritage Month and that's Sabrina and Karina by Kali Fajardo Astin. And this is a book of stories. I do not get along with short stories. If you've been following me on my channel, I've tried maybe two or three different story collections that have been well received by booktube in general and I just never get on with them. I always find them hard to get into. I always find that they're either too long or too short or I don't understand the point of them or I don't care for the characters and that has all been just squashed and is no more an idea that I have about short stories because of this book. This book is so special. It is a book uh, of interrelated stories set in the southwest, specifically in Colorado and in the Denver area. Most of the threads really come back to these same themes of violence against women, of trauma and family issues, of relationships that are toxic, also about gentrification and a changing Colorado and a changing Denver, just what that means to the people who have been in inhabiting this area for a lot longer than the new people that are coming into town. By the way, I guess I'm one of those new people since I've lived in this area for three years now, but I don't live in Denver proper where all of the house costs are like astronomical. I live more on the outskirts. Let me run through some of my favorite stories and kind of why I thought that they were my favorite. So I love the title story Sabrina and Karina. It is about women's looks and violence against women and traditions. I also really, really loved Galapago, which is about the changing Denver. It's focusing on this older woman who is living in this house that is you know, could sell for a lot of money, but she doesn't want to leave it because she's been in this house for 50, 60 years. Something happens that causes the people in her life to basically say it's time to move. I also really loved Tomi. That was probably one of my favorite stories as well because it was more lighthearted than the rest of the stories and it focused more on a relationship between an aunt who has been imprisoned and has just been released and a nephew. Their bond as they're getting to know each other after they haven't seen each other for a really long long time. So if you like sad fiction, which I do, this is a collection of sad short stories that you will probably also like. I really really just love this collection and definitely gonna try more short story collections from now on. This has changed my mind about them. I ended up giving this four and a half stars. All right, another book that I read for Atlantic's Heritage Month was Land of the Cranes by Ida Salazar and this is a book in verse for middle grade. It's a coming of age story and it's also kind of a call to action having to do with the way ICE treats undocumented immigrants and what these facilities and detention centers are like where people have 
been taken and put into cages are being held there indefinitely because they cannot see a judge to rule on their case because they are so swamped with the zero tolerance policy that is currently happening in this administration. It's a really really beautiful book that I listened to on audiobook and I would definitely recommend because the narrator did a great job. The way that the poetry sounds because of her narration, there is this real innocence to this young girl that we're following named Petita and her mother as they are in this detention center after the father of the family has been deported. It's about the conditions in this place and it's the things that we've all seen on the news and know is happening but I think told through the eyes of this young girl really left an impact on me. There's a lot of imagery in this of birds as you can see and of cranes. Her dad calls her plumita which is really cute and it also talks a lot about like the myths of their culture and how that informs the way she views what is happening to her. I ended up giving this four and a half stars and I thought it was really really strong and after reading this I definitely want to get to her other book The Moon Within much faster just like reading letters from Cuba has made me want to read Lucky Broken Girl by Ruth Behar so need to get to the backlist of these authors because of reading their brand new books. Two more books. I've been really on a tear this weekend reading wise and I finished like three or four books that I was in the middle of this past weekend which has been really great. One of those was They Called Us Enemy by George Takei. I really enjoyed this. I think at first I was having a hard time getting into the story because of the black and white aspects of it. Uh, I haven't read a graphic memoir or novel in black and white in a while other than Grass which I read recently. This was also a lot more informative than I thought it would be. So it discusses George Takei and his family being moved out to these internment camps during World War II and how he sees it through the eyes of a child and through the prism of like this is an adventure really and how over time that has changed his ideas about this time have changed as he recognizes the true injustice of having lived in an internment camp, being forced to do this. I thought it was informative in the way that it described the things that were going on in the background with the government and elected officials. I also thought it was lovely to hear George Takei talk about other social movements that he is uh, supportive of, that he uses his voice for. And I definitely think he is a great role model and I enjoyed learning more about his life because I don't know that much about him other than the tweets and the things that I see about him online. Definitely understand why people have been liking this book and I enjoyed it as well and I give it four stars. And then last but not least this morning I finished a really really nice sweet uplifting read and that was You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This is a book about the main character Liz Lighty as she is becoming involved basically with running for prom court to try to win prom queen because it will give her a scholarship that then she can use to go to college and this is in a town where prom means everything. People like Liz in her opinion don't really make it to the top and it's a really sweet coming of age story. It has a lot of notes of friendship and family which I really really loved and it also has this really sweet romance of her and another girl in the school trying to discover who it is you are, forgiving people, letting people back into your life, dealing with grief as well, uh, having to do with health issues and people that she has lost. Putting all of that aside, this is just, just a really sweet, uplifting and I don't know, really optimistic story and that is what I love the most about it. I think it has to do a lot with Leah Johnson's writing. Her writing reminded me a lot of Gilmore Girls where there's like this cozy aspect to it in this fast-paced dialogue and all of these references that she is making to pop culture that I think were sold really well. The voice in this was really special and I really enjoyed it. the audiobook narrator. I think she sold all of that very well. So I think you should pick this book up if you need a pick-me-up, if you need something that will make you happy and smile and um, just cheer you up. It totally cheered me up reading this. I ended up giving this one four stars. So that is it for the books that I've read recently. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, please let me know in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.